The London Ambulance Service takes around six to six and a half thousand calls a day. Hello Alicia, I'm Peter, I'm another one of the paramedics. Tell me um, a little bit about Alicia what's happened. Alicia was riding an electric scooter, has hit a pole uh, and okay. has then come off. She's got this large injury on the back of this leg. How does that feel? Oh, and what about when I touch this? <laughs> Alicia? <laughs> I know, I know. Alicia, try to be calm, yeah? <laughs> right. You're doing really well. What I think we're going to do is get her pain under control with the Entenox to start with. Mm -hmm. So, so holding her in your mouth control. for me? We are the capital's emergency and urgent care responders. We are just a few of the 9,000 people who work 24-7 to care for London when they need urgent and emergency care. We are going to tell you about some of our achievements and what we enjoy about working at the London Ambulance Service. My role is to make sure I like our ambulance station are clean and ready up my calling to use it. Uh, my colleagues I'm a transfer to, into the LAS this year and to very happy to come to LES. Uh, we now, uh, all of us in London live with wages and also we happy to wear that uniform. Uh, what we can um, fill in like we are a team uh, with uh, London Ambulance Station. Before joining the LAS um, last year, um, late last year, I have been a paramedic in Nigeria and practiced for over a year. As part of what I did in Nigeria, I was working um, with the College of Paramedics for over three years um, before joining the LAS. And currently now, I am the London member representative for the College of Paramedics, which is a step forward for me. Um, and I love um, the part of being um, a representative, being the voice for the people. Nationally, women are significantly underrepresented in the hazard Air response teams. At London Ambulance Service we are leading the way in creating a much more diverse team and are proud that 22% of our team members are now female, the highest proportion in the ambulance sector. Our new team-based working approach has been transformational. We engaged with staff in our group on how new rotors, training, huddles and management could work. Three months after we introduced our new measures, the proportion of colleagues who say they feel part of a team has risen from 30% to 70%. Team space working has been really positive for me. Um, I'm really enjoying the four on five off structure. Uh, it allows me to have sort of more downtime between work. Um, I do think it will have a positive impact on patient care as with the rest days, I feel more rested to focus on, on the patients and the care that I provide them. Previously, non-registered ambulance staff had almost no career opportunities in the ambulance sector. Here in LES, we have created a new team manager role to be responsible for the non-registrants and it's a great new job that is providing me with so much satisfaction. Working in um, an in inclusive environment is great because we feel that we're valued for who we are. I'm a practicing Muslim. I'm asked whether or not um, I have a place to pray and what do I need in order for that to take place and I'm given time as well as, um, you know, consideration. And coming from a multitude of other work environments where that hasn't been the case, it's, it, you know, it's so refreshing. As somebody who is autistic, dyslexic, um, I've been able to see that my future within the LAS is a lot more than the five years that I've already done so far and that I can see the avenues and the routes that I can go to with support to meet my needs and requirements within the service. With my neurodiversity and my dyslexia as well, our computer systems are very bright and colourful. However, my screen has been adapted in a way that I will be able to read and retain the information clearly. Inclusive and compassionate management is important to me because it allows me to keep a routine. As a neurodiverse member of staff, routine is really important and the lack of change, or if change is going to happen, that it is communicated in advance, enable me to not be afraid of such change. I'm one of a growing team of 100 education staff educating 1,000 people per year at our two purpose-built education sites using the latest technology like our simulation suites here at Newham. I love the training here. I said last year that the training that LAS provides is second to none. It's really interactive. There's a really good balance of classroom training and practical training sessions. Over the last 18 months, our apprenticeship programmes have won five different awards. We're one of the biggest NHS apprenticeship employers in the country, and we currently employ around 700 apprentices. In 2015, 
On the back of the Care Quality Commission report, we undertook a transformational piece of work regarding medicines. We've also undertaken the Medicines Modernisation Programme and as a result we have a purpose-built, state-of-the-art medicines packing facility. In the last year, we have finalised our track and trace, which means that we can trace medicines from pallet to patient. Also, we have been approved and are running pre-registration pharmacy technician programme in collaboration with Bart's Health NHS Trust. An amalgamation of all of this work means that we are now on track to apply for a wholesale dealer's licence. I'm really passionate that here in London we are developing paramedics and then a career opportunity beyond that. In 2016 we had 380 specialists and advanced paramedics and today we've got more than 670. We plan to double that figure in the next five years. I'm really excited to show you this new app which is My Clinic Preback. It's for the first time any ambulance trust has been able to routinely link our data to hospital data so we can actually show our paramedics what happens to their patients. We have this live across one of our ICSs in a few weeks, a total game changer of paramedic continual professional development. Our eight community joint response cars who see frail, older and complex patients have responded to more than 6,500 patients since October 2022, reducing conveyance to hospital to around 30%. Our six mental health joint response cars treat more than 350 patients every month. The joint paramedic and mental health specialist team has reduced conveyance to hospital to around 10%. When I joined the Trust in 2018, um, LAS had one IUC contract. Uh, five years on, in 2023, uh, we now hold contracts with all five um, integrated care boards. Um, we also collaborate with a range of different providers uh, to provide emergency and urgent care uh, to our patients across London. Um, I'm incredibly proud um, that 111 have the most diverse workforce in the Trust uh, with over 500 call handlers and 200 clinicians um, working across um, both of our control centres in Barking and Croydon. I never thought two years ago when I joined the London Ambulance Service that we would be able to take such a huge leap forward in getting a greener, more sustainable fleet. We've replaced 20% of the vehicles and have the largest complement of electric frontline cars in the sector. October sees the delivery of the world's first double crew full electric original equipment ambulance. Through our London Lifesavers campaign, our teams are working with businesses, education sites and community groups to train 100,000 London Lifesavers in CPR and defibrillation skills. And using uh, volunteers and LAS staff to give this training is imperative to training as many people as possible and ultimately this will improve the, uh, the health and uh, the outcomes from cardiac arrests in London. The chances of surviving a cardiac arrest increases the earlier we can start the chain of survival with chest compressions and defibrillation. This often begins with the bystander who makes that first 999 call. To ensure this life-saving care is started quickly, we have supported our emergency call handlers to focus on giving instructions for chest compressions as soon as possible once a patient is identified as being in cardiac arrest. We also use the Good Sam app and our brilliant team of community first responders to get care to the patient as quickly as possible. Hello, is the patient breathing? Um, no! I'm going to tell you how to do chest compressions. Count out loud so I can count with you. That's One. it. Good. Good. Don't give up. You keep doing that while we wait for the ambulance crew. They're on the way. One, two, three, four, please, come. You will be okay. One, two, three, four.